When we start looking at this surgical site pain for these individuals, what I want to start to address is these important areas that become problematic. So we've talked about the biceps, the scalenes, the pec minor. So one of my favorite interventions for them is positional release therapy. There's a lot of different variations of this, PRT, ART, strain, counter strain. It's all working on this premise that I'm trying to find sensitive tissue that might be hypertonic. I'm gonna put pressure on it, take it to a shortened position and hold it there for 60 to 90 seconds and then we move on. So one area I like to start off with is the scalenes, right? So scalenes, a lot of times as we're immobilized, become problematic. So I'm gonna get in here, prop his head up with, on my arm, and I'm gonna put pressure and he's gonna say, yes, that's painful. And then I'm gonna take the head into flexion and rotate it away. And we're gonna hang out here for 60 to 90 seconds. And I'm gonna work through several different areas through those scalenes. I wanna start to free those up. I wanna get in on this upper trap. So this PRT kind of position for the upper trap becomes finding those positions and then elevating that arm. So now I can elevate that position, put him in a shortened position. Other areas I want to start to address is the bicep, the pec minor. So when I get in and work on some positional release therapy with this bicep, relax for me. I'm gonna take him here, put pressure. He's gonna say yes. Take that muscle into the shortened position, so flexing the wrist, and then I can bring him right here. Now, obviously, we have to be careful with what he's comfortable with, with the range of motion. But working on soft tissue work through this bicep becomes really important because it's going to start to become angry. When the brain feels like this shoulder is not safe and not stable, it's going to start to bring in this bicep to help stabilize. It's going to become hypertonic. It's going to become painful. Also, we're going to become hypertonic and painful because we're not uh, as stable here oftentimes. Pec minor, okay, so same thing here. I'm going to get in that pec minor. Now I'm going to keep him safe and comfortable and bring him across here. And then one other area I think a lot of people miss that becomes important for these patients is the subscap. So that subscap is always a favorite for my patients. Relax, let me have it. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to palpate that subscap on the front side of that scapula and then the position becomes taking them here into that shortened position. Going to hold that 60 to 90 seconds. Now, I'm, I understand that that subscap especially, I'm probably only touching a small percentage of that because I really can't get access to a whole lot of it. But getting up in there and at least addressing to a certain degree the soft tissue in that area is going to help restore some of those scapular kinematics that we're always looking for. Now, some other strategies I really like from a, a soft tissue work perspective initially would be pods. I really like it along the bicep. And then we can just let them cook there, hang out, decompress, starting to work on that tissue mobility, or I can take it through a range of motion as well. So we start to free up, change tone in that bicep area. Same thing up in the, uh, uh, up in the pecs. I also really like using my blades with this. So for my blades here, for this tissue, I'm probably going to down-regulate it. So I'm going to start with my feathering stroke throughout the area. You may want to use an emollient with this. I'm not going to take the time today. But I can use a feathering stroke. We can even just kind of use the side of the tool if we want. Remember, this, this area is very sensitive. It's very inflamed. I'm just trying to use that feathering stroke to downregulate pain in the area. And then when I get into this bicep, it tends to be hypertonic because they're stuck in that flex position. So now I'm going to go with a downregulation stroke, deep, slow, sustained pressure here. Three or four strokes through here, it's going to be about all I need. Same thing, I'm going to work through the, the pecs. Deep, slow, sustained pressure. I actually kind of like it without an emollient. If you notice, I'm pulling some of that skin with it. 
I'm providing shear, which we understand that shear does stimulate the Ruffini endings as well as that deep slow sustain pressure. So that shear can be a good way working through different vectors to further stimulate those Ruffini endings, which are going to downregulate tone in that area. Remember, I need to downregulate tone here typically, not always, but typically, downregulate tone here up in that scaling's upper trap as well. So I can do that downregulation stroke through the upper traps also. So these are some quick, easy areas that I'm going to spend time on. Now what the research tells us is per area we want to go about 90 seconds to 2 minutes, no more than 5 minutes. So this should be 10 to 15 minutes of manual therapy working through all this different area. I want you to just think about I am setting the table. I'm neurologically setting the stage so now I can go and do other things. I can start to implement all these other exercises. So that's the goal of my soft tissue work. Downregulate pain, change tone. Early on, I find my tone management needs to be more along the lines of downregulating tone on this anterior side. Because that's what tends to get hypertonic, which allows me to change that range of motion and open up that range of motion. Now a couple other areas from a soft tissue work I'm going to want to address is I'm going to want to get in this abdominal wall. So I work with a lot of athletes that you can't tell the difference between when that last rib ends and their, their uh, abs begin because they're really tight and splinted. So I need to get in here and I need to work with his breathing and I need to start to mobilize this tissue. So as he takes a deep breath in, Notice he's a big chest breather. We've got to work on that. And then he exhale, exhales. Now I can get in here. I can use my fingers, get into these various areas. So I'm just going to work with his breathing as he exhales. And I can feel he's got a tender spot right there he probably doesn't like very much. Okay? So I'm going to keep working in that area. So as he exhales, now I'm going to get in. I'm going to spend a little bit of time there. See if I can decrease tone in that area. Now we're going to do it on this side as well. So we're going to work all along these sides, working some soft tissue. Let's mobilize this diaphragm region as well. And then the other area I like to work on, because I mentioned the anterior hip, I use a lot of positional uh, therapy on this psoas. So I'm going to get in here about halfway between belly button and ASIS. That's his psoas. He's going to tell me, yes, that does bother him. Now I'm going to bring his hip into flexion. Go ahead and bend your knee for me. Good. And just relax. And let me have that. And once I take him into this shortened position, now that muscle starts to let go. And I'm going to work all the way through that hip flexor region. So I want to make sure that I am doing what I can from a manual perspective to manage tone all throughout this region. Whether that's his anterior hip, diaphragm, front of the neck, into the shoulder. It's all going to be very important for us as we go through this trying to restore normal range of motion that we can address all of those various areas.